you know, a lot of times because of the messages we tell ourselves or maybe the isolation that we've caused ourselves, maybe we haven't learned some things that other people know. And if we ever got out of the shame, then we'd start to connect in a healthy way and then we'd learn and we'd grow. Maybe we wouldn't do those things anymore. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. And if you've been around very long, you know we're going deeper into the sources of shame. Now, one of the things I am not ashamed of is to have written a lot of books and edited Bibles with Dr. Dave Stoop. And Dave is a guy, he's written about a lot of things on his own. And one of the things that he's written, maybe the best on of anybody I've seen, is on self-talk and the damage that we can do to ourselves with some really crummy messages that we're saying to ourselves that maybe we would never say to another human being because it'd be so unkind. But we're totally willing to be unkind to ourselves. Let me give you some examples of the self-talk that comes out of a shame-based reality, no matter what the source is. You start to say things like this. Obviously, this is unforgivable. That thing that I did, God could never, ever forgive that. It's just too bad. It's just too horrible. I felt that way. When I paid for, pressured this young woman to have an abortion, I felt I have totally, totally gone too far, done too much, and it's just going to be horrific, horrific punishment for the rest of my life. Well, you know, it wasn't exactly the way it was. In fact, I got to adopt a, a Madeline who, you know, came from a couple that decided not to have an abortion. But I'll tell you, for a long time, I thought I'll never be forgiven. And I told myself and reminded myself of it, and I lived in that shame. Fortunately, I heard radio preacher Chuck Swindoll say, your, your past just ended one second ago. Why would you live in it? Yeah, I agree. I'm a bad person. It's just who I am. So you just convince yourself. Unlike other people, I have a, a flawed gene or some kind of genetic predisposition or this is just who I've turned out to be. And I'm just bad. Well, I got to tell you, there are a lot of bad people that went to prison. And once they got to prison, they weren't so bad anymore. They weren't always bad. They were doing some bad stuff, you could say. And then they go in and they make a major, major change and discover that, well, God loves them. And they're not just a bad person. They're a person. You know, uh, there were these serial murders by a guy named Son of Sam. And uh, he went to prison, got life in prison. And he accepted Christ. And now he's He's like one of the great evangelists in the prison. And people just can't believe that he's sincere about it. Well, you're not just bad. You might have done some bad things. But God wants to pick it up right here and start over with you. If somebody loves me, um, there must be something wrong with them. Now, isn't that sad? And, you know, if you don't feel lovable and then you kind of fake it, and you, you present a person that you're not really, then somebody says they love you. Not only uh, do you think, well, there must be something wrong with them. You're also thinking, well, if they really knew me, if they knew all the stuff inside of me, they would never love me. So you never get to experience and feel what it's like to be genuinely loved by another human being. What a sad, sad thing. Maybe you say to yourself, I'm defective. And I can't be fixed. I'm like a, like some kind of mutation on the face of the earth. And I just can't get it together. Well, you know what? Maybe by yourself you can't. Because everything I've ever done that's worth anything, I've done it with somebody else, not on my own. 
Maybe you say this, I'm no good on my own, but I'm no good for anyone else either. So you're stuck. I don't want to be single. I don't want to be with anybody. I'm undeserving. And I'll tell you, if you're undeserving, you can do some really, really crummy stuff. If you don't think you're worthy of love or to be loved, you might eat so much that you're totally unattractive to anybody else. And it's your way of protecting yourself. It's a really sad way to exist. And we keep telling ourselves, not good for me. I'm not good for anyone else. I don't want to be alone, but I'm not going to inflict myself on anybody else either. How about this? Everything I touch just turns out crummy. I poison everything I'm involved with. Well, you know, a lot of times because of the messages we tell ourselves or maybe the isolation that we've caused ourselves, maybe we haven't learned some things that other people know. And if we ever got out of the shame, then we'd start to connect in a healthy way and then we'd learn and we'd grow. Maybe we wouldn't do those things anymore. I'm ugly and no one could ever be attracted to me. Well, I got to tell you, I've seen some really ugly people <laughs> that, that got together. I don't think anybody is beyond another person being attracted to them. So if you have these feelings that you're so ugly, no one would ever be attractive. Maybe the most unattractive thing is your attitude about yourself and other people versus what you think looks so bad about you, which might not look so bad after all. And then if you think, I shouldn't raise my hand, I shouldn't talk, I shouldn't contribute to this conversation because everybody knows more than me. And if I do, I'm just going to admit my stupidity or other people are going to see my stupidity. Or how about this? If I died, nobody would really care much. I, will, I don't matter enough to anybody for somebody to really care if I leave this world. All of those things are things that we can tell ourselves because of the shame from our past. They're all messages that are destructive. We'll talk some more about shame next time. But in the meantime, grab a copy of the Emotional Freedom Workbook, sign up for the Emotional Freedom Workshop, and you can do that or ask any question you want at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.